the punishing heat hitting much of the U.S. this week and the downpour that Hawaii is enduring are just the latest in what's been a relentless summer of extreme weather. We spoke to people in different parts of the country about the impacts of these events and how they're thinking about the future. Six, eight inches of rain in 24 hours. We're just, we're not used to that. We bought a generator and I never thought I would need a generator after living here for 40 years. As a farmer, this year has been a very difficult year. Right now in the triple digits that we're hitting, it's a danger to be outside between 11 and 3 p.m. My name is Liz Lavis. I live in Tempe, Arizona. My name's Katie Swick and I live in Montpelier, Vermont. My name is Ben Wynn and I live in Houston, Texas. My name is Beverly Blackwell Bowen from Reedsville, North Carolina. My name is Juan de Clet Barreto. I'm a senior social scientist for climate vulnerability with the Union of Concerned Scientists. Danger season is the term that we use at the Union of Concerned Scientists. It starts in May and in October. The concerns around danger season are the increased frequency of extreme weather events that can occur back to back, that can threaten the population on an almost regular basis. By May 7th, almost 33% of the population had been under at least one extreme weather alert. This number jumped to 50%, nearly 170 million people by May 20th. And by June 22nd, that number had reached 95%. That's very, very concerning. My family has been here for generations beyond when this place was a, a state or even a territory. And I grew up outside, playing outside. But right now, you don't see kids playing outside. I am eight months pregnant, and one of the things that I discussed with my doctor when my feet started swelling is, how can I reduce it or what's causing it? And so my doctor shared with me, well, the heat will actually cause it to swell. So if you're starting to swell now, and I was maybe three or four months in, they're going to be swollen my feet for the rest of the pregnancy. And that was really hard to accept. And so I ended up buying little ice packs that I, I wrap around my feet um, for the swelling. Last July, my home received 32 inches of water on the first floor. We spent the next days and days emptying everything out of the home and piloting it into the front yard. And then Whoa. there goes the blue chair. A few weeks later, watching it get all taken away by big cranes and dumpsters. In December, the basement flooded again, three feet, and then this past July, the basement flooded again. Having to figure out how to pay a mortgage and rent and get that money from FEMA, I've just spent so much time and energy um, trying to recover and not feel like, instead of a disaster happening to me and not feeling like becoming the disaster, as a property manager in Houston, taking care of single family residential homes, we are managing things like sinks and doors needing to be adjusted and small repairs. But over the last two years, we've shifted into this disaster recovery company where we're going out taking care of roofs and power outages, electrical surges, floods, you name it. It's been very challenging. We're shifting from living and enjoying to preparing and bracing all of that really just affects quality of life at the end of the day. How much we spend enjoying looking out the window versus, you know, stressed about packing a to-go bag. None of that is, is exciting and fun. If I just look at the month of July alone, we had 20 or more days of 90 plus degree. On top of the heat, we also had a drought condition with the hurricane that came through on August 8th we got probably a little over 80 inches of rain. I've been out there now on the farm eight years. I've had to deal with a tornado, two storms. So it's a challenge. It's very difficult. One of the most sobering things that scientists have said is that we are not looking at the worst of climate change, but we are looking at the minimum sort of impacts that we will see during our lifetime and during the lifetime of our children. Arizona is in my blood. It is my roots. My family's been here for generations. Although it is hot, I would never want to live where it is cold. Um, I, I love the state and I love where I live, uh, but it's just, it's, it's getting harder to, to stay. I'm finding it very hard to make a decision of tearing down a 140 year old house 
or I elevate it and move back in and have to deal with fixing it up for the next two years? Is it going to be high enough for the next time it happens? I think about these things too much. It wakes you up in the middle of the night wondering what to do. Not once have I considered moving until this year when the derecho and hurricane barrel came through. Seeing the power outages, seeing the damage on the homes, seeing the excessive heat where ACs can't keep up anymore, it sparked me and my partner to look somewhere else to live. And we just recently put an offer down at a house in the Seattle Tacoma area. And we're looking to make a big shift and a big move because we want the stability back. I don't see an ending at all because each year it continues to get progressively worse. You've got to be proactive. You've got to be resilient. And you pretty much have to think outside of the box now. And you know, how do we as farmers sustain long term? I don't have the answers to it. And it's very stressful to even think about. It.